Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Nosa. I'm a medical doctor in the UK and I make videos on medicine and lifestyle. Thank you guys for clicking on this video. So today I'm going to be talking about how I got into GP training in London. I'm going to be taking you through the various stages in the process and how to go about it. If you guys would like to see more about that, then please keep watching. So before I get into exactly how to get into GP training in London and everything you need to know, I'd like to thank Skillshare for kindly sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning platform I really love and I was so delighted when they reached out to me to sponsor this video. If you haven't heard about Skillshare, Skillshare is basically an online learning platform where you can learn about different things. There are loads of classes you can discover on there and it's basically just $10 a month on an annual subscription. So it's completely worth it and I will suggest you guys go and check it out. If you're looking for one of the good classes to watch, Ali Abdal is also a medical YouTuber on here and he's got an amazing class on productivity as a doctor I'm always looking for ways to boost my productivity and I remember when I found out about this Ali Abdal's productivity class it's actually called um, the productivity masterclass principles and tools to boost your productivity one of the helpful things I learned on there was that it was more productive to focus on one task at a time than trying to multitask and spread your time amongst things because you're less efficient that way and first 1,000 people that sign up using my link in the description box down below will benefit from a free trial of Skillshare so you guys should definitely go for it there's no harm go and watch um, Ali Abdal's classes and there are loads of other amazing classes on there for you guys to discover so now let's talk about how to get into GP training in London if you didn't know London is the most competitive deanery to get into for GP training and I remember when I was applying in November last year I was quite nervous about getting a place but luckily I got a place and I'm here to just help you guys through the process so first things first I remember back then there was only one video I found online which is by the junior doctor on YouTube and I found it quite helpful so I thought I should make you know my version of how to get into GP training in London um, to help those that you know are thinking of applying in the next few years GP training is three years in the UK ST1 ST2 ST3 it is three years after you've completed two years of internship after medical school there are three stages involved in the application process for GP training stage one which is the long listing stage two which is the MSRA exam and stage three which, which is the selection center slash face-to-face interview so let's start with stage one Stage one is the long listing and to be long listed you need to fulfill certain criteria. Number one, you need to have a medical degree that's acceptable by the GMC. Number two, you need to have at least two years clinical experience after medical school. Number three, you need to be fully registered with the GMC. Number four, you need to have evidence of completion of the foundation year two competencies. So that would be okay for you if you're already on the foundation program F1 and F2. You can just apply to GP training right away. If you haven't done F1 and F2 in the UK, you would need to provide something called a CREST. CREST stands for Certificate of Readiness to Enter Specialty Training. Usually, international medical graduates will need to come and get some experience in the UK and get a consultant to sign them off with this certificate that they can then use to apply to GP training or any specialty training in the UK. You can check the description box down below to read on the full eligibility criteria to be able to be long listed in stage one and therefore progress to stage two in the GP application process. So I applied on the Aurel website, which is basically a website that um, all trainees in the UK use to apply to training jobs, whether that's F1, F2, um, GP training or other specialties. There are three application rounds every year. The first round is in November, which is the one I applied to. It's called round one and it's the one that majority of UK ap applicants apply to as well. Then there's the second round, which is the round one re-advert. It's usually in February, usually jobs left over from round one that have not been filled up. And then the last round is called round two, which is usually in July. Um, again, not many people apply for that. So after I found out I had been successfully longlisted in stage one, we were given the option to rank our jobs. I only ranked places in London and some places close to close to London around Kent that I could commute to London. All the other jobs I left on ranked because I made up my mind that if I didn't get into these jobs, I was not interested in starting GP training this year and I would probably look on for a year and reapply next year. I wasn't prepared to move around the country. I've just done enough of that in my life. <laughs> so now we're on to stage two, which is the MSRA exam. I don't know why they call it MSRA exam. It just sounds a lot like the bacteria MRSA and I just find it a bit of a tongue twister sometimes. Anyway, 
So, MSRA exam. It is a computer-based exam you take at one of the person view centers located in various re regions around the UK. You usually get a window to book the exam. So what happens is you get long listed from stage one, you get an invitation from the GP application people inviting you to book an exam because you've been long listed. Um, the exam was taking place between the 3rd and 11th of January and I actually booked mine for the 11th of January because I was trying to get as much study time as I could in there. So depending on your style, some people just want to take it earlier and get it out of the way, but I just wanted to leave it till the end to just give myself as many days as I could to study for it. Regarding the structure of the MSRA exam, it is actually divided into two sections. The first section is actually the clinical problem solving section, which is basically based on your clinical knowledge and it's covers all the body systems you can think of. There are usually about 97 questions that you're expected to complete in 75 minutes. Only about 86 questions count towards your final score. The remaining questions are actually just pilots, which basically means that they're just testing them in your group to decide whether they're actually good questions to ask future applicants. So just bear that in mind. The second section is actually called the professional dilemmas question. This is basically very similar to the SJT and if you guys don't know the SJT is basically the exam that the, the medical students wanted to get into foundation training in the UK take so it's very similar to that. It's basically based on different ethical scenarios you come across in the hospital. They're usually about 50 questions and you're actually given about 95 minutes to complete this. Only 42 of those questions actually count towards your final score. The remaining 8 are just pilots as well. To prepare for the MSRA exam, I actually used the MCQ Bank question bank. I paid £55 for access for four months and it was a very helpful resource. I really enjoyed it. There are other resources you can use. There's the MCQ Bank, which I used. There's Pass Medicine, there's eMedica, and there's probably some others I don't know of. Um, some people use both MCQ Bank and Pass Medicine. Some people try and use all three. I personally get overwhelmed when I have too much to complete, so I only focused on MCQ Bank after trying out the three of them and deciding that MCQ Bank was more my style, was more straight to the point. And yeah, a few of my, my doctor friends um, that were in GP training already also recommended MCQ Bank to me. But you know, I would suggest you guys try out the different ones. You can do trials on all of them, I believe, and then find out which one works best for you. Regarding pricing, um, like I said, MCQ Bank is £55 for access for four months. Um, eMedica is, I think, the most expensive one. For four months, you'd be paying about £89, and for six months, uh, access about £99. And then lastly, you have Pass Medicine, which is the cheapest one, about £25 for access for six months. In terms of how long I studied for this exam for, I spent just over two months studying for the exam. In retrospect, I wish I spent a bit longer because I found myself rushing towards the end, and actually, I didn't get to finish every... I didn't get to finish all the questions I was hoping I would be able to um, or go over them as much as I wanted to. So, so I would recommend you spend at least three months or maybe even four if you've got the time to prepare for the MSRA exam. So you have enough time to go over your question bank at least twice or even three times, which is ideal. When it comes to question banks, I like to work through them system by system. So I don't believe in trying to do like, you know, different sections like cardiology, endocrinology, dermatology, all that, you know, at random. I believe in focusing on one section at a time. So cardiology, I cover all the questions in cardiology, make sure I've understood all the answers and then move on to a different section. That way I feel like I'm just kind of having this positive, like it's also like a reinforcement of the knowledge I have when I keep repeating um, questions in the same section. One tip I have for you guys when it comes to any exams you take, and if you guys have watched one of my PLAB videos, you know I mentioned this tip before in my PLAB 1 video, how to prepare, is about picking a lucky letter before you go into the exam. That's the letter you use when you have absolutely no clue what the answer could be to a question. I personally always pick C in those scenarios. You have a higher chance of getting the answer right if you pick a lucky letter, as opposed to trying to pick a random one each time. I'm talking about questions you can't make an educated guest for. The MSRA exam carries 60% of your final score. Of that 60%, 40% is the professional dilemma section. The other 20% of your final score is based on the clinical knowledge bit. 
The final 40% of your final score is actually based on the selection center slash face-to-face -face interview. Important to know when it comes to ranking applicants when it comes to applying for GP training. Add additional qualifications like you know having a master's degree or PhD which you might get some points for in other specialty training applications you don't get for in GP training. You also don't get extra points for doing audits so just be aware that it's simply this is exactly how they calculate your score. This is all that matters. All the extra, all the extra stuff is great to do, you know, in terms of making you a better doctor in general, but it is not, it doesn't give you an advantage when it comes to your GP application. So now I'm going to talk about stage three, which is the selection center. For you to progress to stage three, you obviously have to pass stage two, which is the MSRA exam. And if you fail the MSRA exam, then you cannot proceed to stage three and then you'll be removed from the um, application pool and have to reapply next year if you're still interested. There's something that most applicants aim for called the direct pathway to offer, which basically means that after you've you know, gotten through stage one and stage two, which is the MSR exam, and if you score 550 and above in the MSR exam, you're actually exempt from stage three and you can actually jump directly to being offered a place. So basically these applicants that score above 550 in this exam would be able to rank their first options and they usually get their first options before those applicants that have to go to stage three bear in mind that most applicants still have to go through stage three and i remember when i found out i had to get into, go to stage three because i just about missed the cut it was quite painful to be exempted from stage three um i was i was quite worried that i wouldn't be able to get a place in london because i had, i had heard that you had to get above 550 to get a place in london but luckily i managed to get through the selection center stage three and i did quite well so i managed to secure a good spot in london and just don't be disheartened if you don't, you know, manage to get above 550. Um, majority of people won't, and that's okay. Just be proud that you've managed to pass this exam. The selection center is divided into four parts. There are four tasks you need to do usually. The first one is a written prioritization task, and it's sort of like an ethical scenario where you rank options um, like you do in the professional dilemma section in the um, MSRA exam, but this time, you have to justify why you have chosen certain answers. So why you have ranked some options above others. You have 30 minutes to complete this exam, um, this section, and it's a bit more difficult than I thought. I think it requires quite a bit of practice. When you're making decisions in ethical scenarios, you need to be able to think of why you're, well, how you can justify these decisions to someone else, which is why you're writing it down. And you also need to explain why you haven't made certain de decisions. Some of them are quite self-explanatory, but um, yeah, again, loads of practice with ethical scenarios you can find good ethical scenarios on the gmc website um the second the, the, the second um part is basically consultation so you have a consultation with a relative or carer of a patient you have a consultation with the patient itself and you have a consultation with a colleague um, you have an examiner in the room watching you um, interact with the patient. They're really looking at your communication skills, how you manage situations. And again, that requires a lot of practice. I would recommend you just buddy up with someone and, you know, try and practice different scenarios you come across at work. Usually it's really simple stuff like, you know, an angry relative, which is pretty common or breaking bad news. It's just the usual stuff you get like a normal OSCE medical school exam. So just try and come up with some random scenarios and just practice. It's not really about knowing what's going to come out. It's about just being able to pick an approach and be able to use it in different scenarios, regardless of what you come across, because you will be using those skills when you become a GP and when you're in GP training. So yeah. If you guys want a more in-depth video about how to prepare for the selection center slash face-to-face -face interview, then please drop a comment down below and I'll gladly make one because I can, you know, go into more details about how to approach the written prioritization task. I can go into tips about preparing in terms of the consultation part as well. So let me know in the comments down below if that's something you're interested in and I'll make it for you guys. To prepare for the selection center, I was quite nervous and didn't know what to expect. So I actually spoke to some doctor friends who recommended the e-medical course. It was £369, which is quite steep for a day course. And it was helpful, but I'm not sure I needed to attend. Like, I'm not sure how much it, how much of a difference it would have made to, it made to my score. Um, so don't please feel pressure to attend it at all. I mean, you know, if you've got the money, then go ahead for it. But I have mixed feelings about the course. I think 
like I said, it's just, it's a good course. I just think it's expensive. And I guess that's just all I'm trying to say. Um, but like I said, if you guys want some tips about how to prepare for this section, I can, you know, just let me know in the comments and I'll prepare a video for you on how to prepare for the um, selection center. So after you've completed stage one, two, three, you get your offer. Um, regarding the offer, I mean, you get the option to accept an offer outright, I believe. You can hold the offer and you can accept an offer with an upgrade so if you get maybe your eighth option but you still would like your first option you can accept the offer with the possibility of upgrading and what happens is that some people for some you know different reasons maybe maternity wanting to go take an f3 year or just not go into training right now or defer entry which means just postponing by a year um, they just decide to drop out of the program after going through all the stages for whatever reason and if they decline those options, then you would get, you, you have the possibility of being upgraded to a higher option. And that just happens automatically. When you do get an offer, you usually have 48 hours to respond. So please guys, make sure you're checking your junk, make sure you're checking your inbox because there's some horror stories out there of people, you know, getting offers and not realizing it. And then, you know, the offers being de automatically declined because they haven't responded in 48 hours and then going to somebody else. And when that happened, you don't really get the offer back so just make sure you know you're alert during that period as well and just on the side notes if you want to know about competition ratios in the uk so if you're interested in getting london london is about 2.9 applicants per place it's the highest in the uk there are other parts of the country as well which are quite high so i'll leave a you know a link in the description box down below you can go and look at different regions in the uk and what the competition ratios are just bear in mind that they're not exactly you know very accurate because some people apply for multiple specialties at once some people apply and drop out earlier on you know so they're not don't use that to decide on where you want to go but it's just good to have a rough idea if you guys haven't already please subscribe to my channel i would love to have you guys back for more videos and you know what i really appreciate is if you guys give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and also just you know leave me a nice comment or just let me know any videos you're interested in watching in the future because if there's a lot of interest in the video i would definitely make it for you guys thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next one